good what? And evil what? See that, right? Now, what are you going to need to distinguish evil? Because it look, because evil now is going to look as good as good is. So you're going to need the spirit to show you the difference. You can't try to say, oh, he looked good. No, because there's a way that seemeth good unto him. There's a way that what? Seemeth good unto him. But guess what happened? Lead him to what? Seem good, right? It didn't say seem evil. There's a way that seemeth good, but guess what happened? Evil death is there. And guess who's going to keep you from it? The spirit. The spirit is going to keep you from what? From death. Because he's going to tell you when everybody, see the thing about it, and I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, the thing is, everybody going to be following that thing. Everybody's going to be following it because they're going to think it's good. That's why the Lord said that unless I shorten the days, even the very elect, why? Because everybody, it looks good, but they go after it. But if it's short in the days, even the very elect, that's how deceptive a spirit of deception is going to take the world. And only the spirit, those who have the spirit, will detect it. If, you know, a bag, right? Gucci, whatever the bags are, it looks like the real thing. But it's really, if it's really made real good by a professional, it looks good as the real Gucci. But the only person you probably buy is a knockoff and you probably buy because to your eyes it looks good as the real thing. You know? For the guy who sells it to you say, you know, it's the real thing and you buy thinking it's real but you buy it real cheap so you gotta buy it. But the person whose eyes is trained more than you is able to tell the knockoff just by one look. So what am I saying to you? You can buy into a lie that looks like the truth. And only the spirit can show you don't go there. There's death in the pot. That's why you need the Holy Spirit in these days. That's why. But I believe that those who raise up their hands, you're going to get filled. This morning, Deacon Nelson got filled with the Holy Spirit. After the sermon is over, I'm going to teach you how to receive a new thing. Be excited. Be say, okay, Lord. I'm, I'm believing. If, 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 if tough Deacon Nelson got saved, two years ago he was out there doing what he wanted to do. And the Holy Spirit can feel him this morning. You know God is real. Oh no, he was up in there. And and that's that edge he needs yes. to become a different man. Yes. He needs the Holy Spirit to take him from where he's at. It's good you got saved, but you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. And with what power? Yes. Now he's going to live a victorious life. Yes. Praise the Lord. Get the seat ready. Get, sit down. I want everybody to have a Bible. We're going to get teaching today. So somebody will get teaching. Get your Bible, get your iPads, get your iPhones or smart Android. Don't be texting nobody with it. Just follow Bible with it because you need to hear it. Amen. Get your Bibles. Put me up just a little bit. Mr. Brazil or somebody back there put me up. Oh, right here. Somebody put me up. That's good right there, KK. Thank you. 
Gesù sia. Mi pare che ciò parlo. Questo lo dovrò anche ciò parlo. O che ciò iPhone. All right. I need you to carry your Bible or I'm going to buy you one. So you need one. Praise the Lord. I say you got yours, right? Okay. Praise the Lord. If you don't have a Bible, lift up your hands. You're going to get one. All the kids get a Bible. I want you to follow too. You hear me? You're never too young to be filled. Destiny is fake. Say, God, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. I'm going to be filled today. Kelly, respect. Amen. Just respect today. Respect. Get ready to respect. We're going to talk about 21 things you, every Christian, need to know about the Holy Spirit. But I'm actually going to only talk about two. Talk about 21. So you see, I have a lot to teach. So on Thursday, I'm going to finish. I'm going to start some. On Friday, on Sunday, again, I may come to some and do some. But 21 things you need to know about the Holy Spirit. But the reason you're having two today is because there's some things I need to talk to you about. Amen? There's some things. Now, let's go to a Bible. John chapter 3, verse 8. Praise the Lord. John 3, verse 8. John chapter 3, verse 8. Somebody um, read for me, please. I have readers. John 3, 8. Where the minister is at? Where y'all at? Stand up. Read. They begin to read God's holy word. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence they're coming. And where they can go with, so is everyone that is born of the Holy Spirit. So, when the thing about the Holy Spirit, you don't have control and you don't have comfort. He takes you where you where he wants to take you. You can't control him. You know, and I know there's certain people who think they can control the Holy Spirit and he gonna do what he says um, you want him to do. But the point is that you gonna do what he calls you to do. You gonna move in the way, that's the problem you have. Because that's why you wanna lead, but you don't lead him. He leads you. He bloweth wherever he wants to, to blow. He takes you wherever he wants to take you. You don't take him. And I know most religious circle, you know, want to call him. The, no, no, no. He does what he wants. He bloweth where? Wherever he wants to blow. And it, I'm, I'm read it again. The wind what? Bloweth what? Listen. Where? Listen. Okay, I'm going to read it in the message, I believe, right? But God said, I'm going to teach today. He said, so don't be surprised when I tell you that you have to be born from above, out of this world. Right? Out of this world, so to speak. You know well enough how the wind blows this way and that, right? You hear it rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from or where it's headed next. That's the way it is with everyone born from above by the wind of God, the Spirit of God. You don't know where it's going to blow. It may start here. So the thing is, if, you, if you're the type of person that needs to know the next step from the next step, you may have a problem with the Spirit. Because he's going to go wherever he want to go. You just got to be following him. And a lot of times you need like a, you know, a explanation. Where you going? How you going to get there? Don't worry about it. Just he blowing wherever he blowing. And your job is just follow him and go where, wherever he tells you to go. Now, we, in the next part you're going to know and I'll talk about before. The Holy Spirit will protect you from wrong teachings. And how many of you understand there's a lot of wrong teachings going on in the church? Yes. A lot of wrong teaching and only the Holy Spirit will tell you that's not God right there. That's not God. And on this Sunday, there's a lot of churches full and people are listening but the wrong teaching. Because the Bible said in the last days, people have what? Itchy ears. Yes. And what is itchy ears? You know, you need somebody to scratch. Everybody have an itch. Feels good when you scratch it. I'm going to tell you what, what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. And, and when you come to the audience, when you come to church, I'm going to tell you a feel-good message. Yeah. And, and without transformation of the spirit. Mm -hmm. 
You understand that? A feel-good message that titillates your mind. If you if you have a problem with money, I'm going to preach about money today, and I'm telling you how God going to bless you and how God going to do this. But the problem is with your disobedience. That's why you broke, because you don't tie. So here you are, because you have itchy ears, you're out of money, and you want somebody to preach this to you. Is it wrong? You see, see, you, you, you have to be careful when you're preaching the wrong thing. Because the root of the issue of disobedience is not money. So we have to be obedient towards the Lord. So there are certain teachings that makes us feel good like sugar candy. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids love it. I mean, they, their lips is getting the smack when they have sugar. Mm -hmm. They're like, mm -hmm. and guess what happened? They hype. They start moving. Well, that's how you do in church. When you hear, when you get your dose of sugar, you start shouting. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they get them kids get hyped when they have sugar. See, the parents want them to be all right for that moment they shot up. But after you pay for it, after they had them sugar, they're running all over the house. Yeah. That's true. So that's why we cannot have sugar coated gospel. That's good. That's right. We can't have sugar coated word of God because that word got to go deep in my spirit and bring a transformation and break strongholds in my mind for me to be thinking different than when I first came in and to think about it without the Holy Spirit you will not be able to determine from the sugar to the real thing because the truth is we want to hear what we want to hear the thing that's hard you get offended you get upset Oh, you know, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know. He ain't talking right today. He mean. He nasty. No, it's not. But it's right talk. It's right talking. But the thing is that the Holy Spirit will will protect you from sugar coating gospel that feels good. But guess what? It has empty calories. It has empty. It has no good available calorie. There's no protein. There's no Nothing to build up your muscle. There's nothing to build up your brain function or build up anything that you've got. But guess what happened? The, and the Holy Spirit will determine, make you spit it out and be like, that's not God. So he'll teach you between the right and the wrong. Yes, God. Amen. First Timothy 4.1. We're going to go to First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. It means, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits uh, and doctrines of devils. Now guess what? The spirit of seduction. Now I'm going to read it in the message. The Spirit makes it clear that as time goes on, some are going to give up on the faith. What? What is the faith? The true word of God. They're they going to give up on the word of God, the truth of the word, right? And chase after demonic illusions. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, demonic illusions. That, so why they say demonic illusion? Talk about demons in the pulpit preaching. Jesus. Who, who, who look like men, talk like men, and you'll run after them, carry their bags. Okay, let me stop. Talk the truth. All right. Uh, let, me, let me be nice. Let me leave talk it alone. The truth, talk the but, truth. But this is what I'm saying. Demonic what? Illusions. Demonic illusions that make you even go after the gospel of money, the gospel of this, and even you got to be careful about using the Bible to control God. I'm going to say this scripture, and there's nothing wrong with you, you know, but you still don't control God. See, when you say the scripture, there has to be a changed behavior behind it. Okay. You can't ask God to bless you when you live it any way you want. And expect them to do what he says about you when you don't meet the prerequisite. That's called the spirit of manipulation. You want him to do it, but you're not doing your part. Okay. Told you. You, you say, God bless me, but you're living like a hellraiser. 
I know. See, already. That's good. That's good. Already, we don't want. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Ah. We saying God do this for me, heal me, but you just but you live in disobedient to His will. So it's not that God won't bless you, can't heal you, but you cancel out certain things that God will give to you because you're not meeting the requirement. And there's there's a strong delusion in your mind, and you're worshiping a different God than the God of the Bible. Because you know you're not doing what he says, but you want him to do what he's, what you want. What's wrong? Okay, I know. Right. You're going to get some money right now. Lord, have my turn around eight times. Now, that's the truth. Can I, can I talk to you? You want God to do his part, but in your heart, you're not living the way God wants you to live. First of all, right there, you already condemn yourself. Because when you do act, you know in your heart. The Bible says, you know, when your heart condemns you, you already know you're not in the will of God. You're not doing what he wants to do. So already, you really pray for him to do it. But in your heart, you already know you're receiving because you know what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Some are going to give up on the faith and chase after demonic illusions put forth by professional liars. Wow. They ain't going to tell you the truth. Because their aim is to tell you about the, 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 the blame blames, what you can get, and what you um, want, but they're not giving you the truth of really what matters. It's not only about the life that you live now, but the life that you're going to live after. Okay. It is the mindset of buy now and pay later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus put it this way, what is meant for you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Mm -hmm. What is the point of you living the high life? Can I talk about it? Yes. What is the point of living the life? Like, so what? You got you got the bling blings, you got the money, you got the houses, you got the car, you got the woman coming in, the men coming in, you got what you want. Okay, you got it. But what about a hundred years from now when well, you get it? What's gonna happen? Oh yeah, you living a good life. You 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 doing what you want to do. You 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 being disobedient to God, and and, and you doing everything that you think that you want to do, and you getting away with it. There's no consequences. There's no nothing. But but now we have professional liars who's telling there's nothing wrong with a little sin. There's nothing wrong with a little hookup. I know. Now I'm wrong with a little hookup. There's nothing wrong with being disobedient. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong. And guess what? There's scriptures and everybody loving each other. Oh, it's all right. I understand. God don't. Why doesn't he? Because he paid the price for it. That's what you're talking about the Holy Spirit thing. I am. I am. I am talking about it. Okay. These liars have lied so well and for so long that they lost their capacity for truth. What that mean? They lie so much to the point that they believe what they're telling you and you have come into a point of sense of delusion to think that, you know what, I'm all right. You know what? You shouldn't come in the house of God and live any way you, you think you want to live and be comfortable. There should be some kind of conviction of the Holy Spirit. You say you want the Holy Spirit. That's why we shut him out. Because he's going to say things nobody else want to say. He going he gonna to catch you where you at. He going to come in your face where you at. It's not going to be easy. So that's why you see why they don't want him in the churches. You see why they don't want him to come to the doors. 
You see why? Because guess what? See, the thing about it, the disciples, the, he made their lives uncomfortable when he showed up. When the Holy Spirit come up, he make your life uncomfortable because he shine light in the darkness of your life. He shine light in the darkness and make you uncomfortable and either you're going to conform or you're going to run from it. Yes. You're going to run from it. Now, 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 glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Now read 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Start reading in verse 3. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh-huh, hold up right there. For the time will come what? They will not endure. They're not going to hear solid word. Yeah. They don't want to hear sound. Flat-footed preaching. They don't want to oh, hear it. Mm. You want somebody to make you, you know, to so make you shout, but you're not going to hear what? Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Go ahead. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Mm. You see that, right? Five, all the way to five. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make no proof of thy ministry. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read it in the message. You're going to find there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching. What does it mean? That most people will come and hear the word and throw it up. It ain't going go in. See, when solid teaching, com compare it to food that goes into your stomach and get nutrients and feed you and strengthen and give you life. So there's no life because what you're doing when you get solid teaching, you ever see little babies when they don't want no more, they start spitting? Yeah. Well, you spit out the good word because you don't want to hear it. And you block out in your mind because, because the whole point is, if you're going to have the Holy Spirit, He's going to check out. First of all, I'm going to let you know certain things about God. Because you don't know certain things about God. I don't know which God you know about. I'm going to let you know about the God of the Bible. Amen. You don't need to know it today. Now, it says here, but we'll fill up our spiritual junk food. You're going to feel yourself. You don't want steak. You want junk. You want spiritual junk food because it tastes better. Potato chips preaching. Um, cotton candy preaching. Wow. Tastes good. I don't know what an apple candy, the little thing with the apple. You take a, exactly, candy apple. Tastes good. To make, make the apples palatable. You don't want no solid teaching. I want sugar coating. I, I want to taste as sweet as it want to be. I don't want to be hurt when it goes down, baby. I want a sweet, give me that sweet word. Give me some junk. I go to church, I want junk food. I want junk, spiritual junk teaching. Don't come at me. Don't tell me how to live, right? Don't tell me how to be a good husband, a good wife, a good daughter, a good son, a good human being. I don't want to hear that. Tell me about the money. Tell me what I'm going to get. Tell me about the future. Amen. Okay. Catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. They'll turn their backs on truth and chase marriages. But you keep your eye on what you're doing. Accept the hard times along with the good. Accept what? The hard times along with what? The good. Keep the message alive. Right? Do a thorough job as what? God's servant. As God's servant, when you go through, deal with it. When the good time comes, thank God. Amen. There's going to be what? A good time and some bad times. Amen. 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 Bring it. I'll teach you. A couple of things about the God of the Bible. If I ask somebody to give me an attribution of God. See, I have to do this so I can get to the message of the Holy Spirit. 
the God of the Bible, number one, he is sovereign. Amen. He is what? Sovereign. Amen. Exodus 33, 19. Exodus 33, 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. You can't control him. He does what he wants to do. That's now he says this. God said, the message said, God said, I will make my goodness pass right in front of you. Mm -hmm. I'll call out the name God right before you. I'll treat you well. Whomever I want to treat well, I'll be kind to whoever I want. Now that takes out you telling God not to bless your haters. Yeah. That's right. That's right. right? It, take, it take that right up the window. You say, God, I don't like her. So to make sure she is blessed. Yeah. But he says here. That, so no, there are some people who say shut it down for them, right. but you have to understand number one thing about God, he's sovereign, he does what he wants yes, to do, yes, and yes. he bless whoever yes, he wants to bless. Right. He does. Yes, you yes. can't tell him who to bless, who not to bless. Right. Praise the Lord. Huh? That's right. Amen. You can't tell him, that's one thing, because there's some people who think, oh, he ain't going to bless them. You see, but the thing is, there are some requirements to receive that. Because don't think that, oh, yeah, he's going to bless everybody, but are you going to do what he wants you to do to bless? You, you, you have to understand, then that means that he's not something. No, that means that he has blessing for everybody. Yes. But are you going to do what it's going to take for you to receive that? Amen. That's good. That's good. I'll be kind to whomever I want to be kind. Romans 9.15 Romans 9.15 Go on. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. See that, right? Yeah. I will have what? Mercy on whom I will have what? Mercy. Okay, there are some people who you know According to you, may not deserve it, but he allows them, give them some mercy, yes. even in their wrong, so he so they can get it right, mm -hmm. so he can come towards it. Yes. Um, he's not so quickly trying to get you as you think. Okay. He's not so quickly trying to destroy you. He go, he give us more mercy. I know he gave me mercy, and he gave you mercy more yes. than what we deserve just to get yes. it right. Yes. 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 So. When God judges, he judges right because he gives so much mercy. Yes. Amen. When he comes in and say enough is enough, you know, he gave you enough mercy to get it right. And I know he gave us, he gave me, you and all of us here enough mercy to get it right. Amen. Ephesians 1.11. Ephesians 1.11. obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. You see that right? Who worketh, you see, in Christ it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us had designed on us for glorious living. You, 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 you can't come to God and have a blueprint of your life. Mm, that's right. And say, okay, God, I'm head, this is my this is what I want to do. And this is the way I want to do it. Okay, God, and you do it. No. Nah, it don't work that way. That's not the God you serve. That's right. The God you serve, he said that I I have a book. And in Psalm 137, it talks about that even before you were born, I put your members and everything about you on a book. Yes. And I was telling somebody today, you came with a book of instructions. Yes. He already had your life with him. Ooh, Whatever life you live in right now is the life you want. Right. It's the life that you design. So God is more like a designer who already designed a life for you. 
he allowed, he designed. And that book, he has a wife, children you're supposed to have, but you go out your way and want to pick up your own life. Right. So you have kids with people you want, marry people you want, do, be in a relationship with people you want. But the thing is, you can have it, but it, it, even though you have it, that doesn't mean that's the life he has for you. Something will always be missing. Mm -hmm. yes, God. Mm -hmm. Because he's not going to force his life on you. Amen. You got to want the life he has yes, for you. Right. So he's saying here that he has some things according to the counsel of his own will. Mm -hmm. He ain't asking you what you want. Mm -hmm. He's not asking you about your will and your purpose, what you think and what you desire. No, you come to me and find out what I purpose for you. What I have for you. Because what I'm doing right now, I'm breaking up some mindset of what you thought God was. Because you're going to come and tell God with your bad self what you want. Mm -hmm. And the way you want don't work out that way. You say, you come to God because guess what? One of the things about him, he works everything according to his will and to his purpose and what he wants. Mm -hmm. Not you telling him anything. He tells you that his plan, you find out his plan, yes. you find out his purpose for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How many of us have done that? Yes. Amen. 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 I haven't always. Thank God you all did. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me say to you, how many of you want God purpose for your life? You all want God purpose, right? Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. You want God's purpose for you. And and and, and okay. And then he says this. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eyes on us, yeah. right? Yeah. Had designed on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose, he is working out in everything and everyone. That's why yielding to the Holy Spirit is another thing that's going to help you live in the life that God will have for you. If the Holy Spirit helped you go fully into the design life the right life that he had for you. The more you walk in God, the more you tell to the Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves, we yield our very being unto you. Um, yielding to the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you don't work. It just means that you're going to have to work too right. on fulfilling, but you have to be in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He may not explain everything to you as things go along, but he will, the, 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 the Holy Spirit will reveal certain things as you go along. Because it's going to be a need-to-know basis. If it's not a need-to-know basis, then we wouldn't need faith. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. So you're going to have to trust him. When he begins to speak to you, tell you, go over there. You don't need to say, okay, God, when I go over there, what I'm going to do? Don't worry about it. He said, go over there. Yes. And when you go over there, then he's going to tell you what to do when you go over there. Some of y'all want to know what he's saying, but you never went over there. You didn't get there first. And you're saying, well, God, why don't you speak to me? Because you ain't never do the first thing I told you. Then I'm not going to go tell you the second thing you need to know. It's not that I'm not speaking because you ain't following. Amen. 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 Not, 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 not hearing anything I told you to do. You're not hearing, so you can't get the next step. You're not God not talking. You ain't done nothing. What should, I, what should I, Mike Murdoch say? Give no time to non-listeners. Give no time to non-listeners. What does that mean? Don't give people time who are going to listen to what you tell them. Now, not everybody should be able to tell you what to do because they don't have the spirit. But, but the thing is that if you have certain wisdom and you tell people they ain't going to listen, next time they come, say, hold up, baby. Access not granted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why? Why am I keep talking when you ain't listening? Mm -hmm. 
I'm talking, y'all, okay, you, what you're doing now is wasting my time. That's right. And I don't got no time to waste because you're not listening. That's right. So now, if you're listening, there has to be a yielding. You're not being, see, you want to hear from God, but you have to look at the ways that God speaks. God is speaking right now to his word. What did I tell you on Friday in the class? That God is speaking to you right now prophetically in a corporate level. Don't try to think it's me talking, but it's the Spirit talking to you. Just because I'm not saying, thus said the Lord God. And if I come and say, thus said the Lord, there's a lot of you who will be more attentive. But because you don't understand things, and you don't understand how the Spirit works, you think it's just a man talking, and it's not God speaking to you right now, so you're not paying attention. But when you begin to pay attention and begin to hear God's voice and say, you know what? It's God speaking to me right now and i got to hear what he's saying because he may guide me in my life. But the thing is that the more that, you know, um, you're not yielding to what's being said to you, I, he won't speak to you no more. He won't say nothing to you no more. So you've got to be careful to what, you know, he's trying to tell you and begin to do it. And guess what? The more you do, the more you hear. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two. I was still in number one. Number two. He is omnipotent. O-M-N-I-P-O-T-E-N-T. Omnipotent. Meaning that he ain't diluted. <laughs> he potent. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, now, okay, let me explain that. There is nothing he cannot do. Okay. Amen. Some of y'all, even when you pray, because of the way certain people make you understand God, or because the way you understand it, you say that God can't grow your limbs. That's why you he won't see no limbs grow. You say God won't heal me of cancer. That's why you won't see it grow because that's what you believe. So you have to understand is what do you believe about God? What is your mindset about God? God is what omnipotent. There's, tell somebody there's nothing that he cannot do. Okay, okay. When 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 he came to Abraham and he told him you're gonna have a kid, a hundred years old, and his wife left, he said, "Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything what?" Too hard for me. So you mean I'm, I, I can have a kid at night? Yeah, if God said so. Yes, you can. You see, some of y'all right now, I'm helping y'all out because the thing is that what you believe about God is keeping you from your next miracle. Jesus, that's good. What you're thinking about God is keeping you from your next level in God. What you believing about God is keeping you from the next purpose that God would help you to be. Amen. So now, look at Luke 1, 37. Luke 1, 37. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Huh? Yes. You don't have yours in your Bible? You need to change form or something. <laughs> you have to change form. <laughs> Everybody read it We're along with Minister Renee. For God, nothing shall be impossible. Read it again. For God, nothing shall be impossible. Read it again. For God, nothing shall be impossible. Read it again. For God, nothing shall be impossible. So why is it that you're not believing whatever you're believing for, you can do it? Because somewhere along the way, you think something is impossible, you can't do it. Some people will say um, something like, do you see this happening, all right? Do you see this happening, and God can do this in my life? God can heal in my life. Okay, kids, don't play. Come on, calm down. All right, so now, 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 do you see that, right? It say that there are certain things, okay, one of you take the kids downstairs, okay? So you say that with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. Impossible. Because there are certain things in your mind that you feel like um, because of certain things happen, you say God can't do it. 
It is not God who can't do it. It is you who blocked them. Right. It is you that's keeping God yeah. from really moving into your life because somewhere along the way you think that God won't able to do what he said he will do. Mm -hmm. You understand that? There's a blockage because of what you believe or maybe you heard somebody say something or a preacher just because it comes from a preacher you think that okay God can't do that. God won't do that for me. But I'm here to let you know that God is what? I'm the important. Yeah. Tell somebody there's nothing God cannot do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three, he's omnipresent. Yeah. Tell them he's omnipresent. Omnipresent. Okay. Let me explain that. He is everywhere. Tell somebody he is everywhere. Tell them when you were sinning, when you are under the covers, guess what I'm saying? God is like, I'll see you. I'll show you. You know why you think you said it in your mind? You think he ain't dead. Okay, that's why. All right. In your mind, you think God is there, but he's there. While you're having your little fun, smoking weed and having fornication, adultery, everything else we're having, guess who's there? God is there. <laughs> Quiet. That is true. When you lie, God is there. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. When you doing all the craziness that you're doing, when you when you talking back in your house, you arguing. Guess who's there? See, some of you don't think, don't believe he's omnipresent. That's what you're he's there. He watching everything. Why are you doing it? Your your covers. You can have lead covers. You still can see it. And I hope some of y'all, when you're doing what you're doing, that word will ring on you. He's dead. When you say he's dead, Pastor, say he's dead. Oh my God. God's like, roll the camera, boys. You take the net one. We're going we to play at the judgment seat. <laughs> we gonna play that part at the judgment seat, boys. <laughs> we gonna play on 3D. <laughs> and knowing God, he probably got 20 Ds. <laughs> he said, play it, boys. Some of y'all gonna be out there in the judgment seat. That ain't me. <laughs> Got the wrong. No, I got that. No, no. That was the wrong block, man. I told you, angels ain't the job. He <laughs> in the wrong block. That's the wrong house. That's not even me. My head straight. Look at that curly. He ain't me. I have a twin. <laughs> you know my twin God. You know you know him. He was here. That was ain't me. <laughs> what you need to do what Jesus does he edits the film he cuts he cuts all those parts and he only show the good parts when you get up there oh lord I hope they can show this oh, when you come you only see the the edited movie not the already. Some of us have triple X. But, but anyway. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Okay, that goes for me, you. I don't care what you're thinking. What about God? He ain't here. He, he here. He see everything you're doing. He knows everything you said. He knows how you do it. That's why we need to repent. So guess what? When you come to church, you be nice and you home, you your home crazy. <laughs> and you walk into hi, 
how do you think it? And you blessed. And then with your crazy self, God said, no, you were acting crazy five minutes ago. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you. So tell somebody, best behavior at all times. Best behavior at all times. Time. Since he's watching. Since he's watching. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. See that, right? So don't tell me that, you know, hey, you know, that after you got saved, you don't need to repent. Amen. So when you repent, it edits Amen. certain things. You, Amen. You, you, you really begin to say, God, forgive me yes. for what I did. Please, God, I forgive. So he said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be what? Blocked. Blocked. See? Blocked. Amen. Edit. Amen. Repentance. Amen. Edit. Amen. Which you did. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that if you're ready to confess your sin, you're ready to forgive. So that's why you always have to repent. Yes. Amen. But what does repentance does? It blocks out everything. Amen. Amen. It just wash it, cut it. Cut. Okay, guys, let's cut this off. <laughs> He repented. And repented, and I, and I know a lot of us, we repent and go back to doing the same thing. And then after a while, Satan wants to trick you and say, you know what, you might as well stop repenting because you're going to keep doing it. And that's how he gets you into bondage because you never repent. Every time, God, I repent. Please forgive me. I repent. Always get that repentance so he can blot it out. Because the, if you find out the more you keep going, is the more that you don't repent. When you don't repent, you have no breaks now. You keep on doing it. So repent therefore why? That your sins may be what? For when the time of refreshing should come from what? You see that, right? So he begins to refresh you again when you repent. The time of refreshing where the Holy Spirit can come on you will come. Because those of you who want to refill it, there has to be repentance. Amen. Amen. So that the time, because guess what? If if I bring the rain and you got an